Basically, all the information we have is written in old Gallic manuscripts. Now, I call them old Gallic manuscripts because that is precisely what they are. They are written in Gallic and that is how the people who wrote them described their language. They said, we are writing in Gallic. Because most of these manuscripts have ended up in Ireland and nearly all the research has been done in Ireland, and at least in the first part of the 20th century, the later 19th century, uh, they have come to be known as Irish and uh, this is not really right. Um, they are Gallic and aspects of those manuscripts, some of which were made here anyway, like when Adamland's Life of Colombo was made here um, and others. Uh, aside from that, many of the aspects of these stories and myths have survived uniquely in the Scottish oral tradition and not in the Irish tradition. So if you take the tales of the, the Fianna with Finn McCool and Oscar and Oshin and all the rest of them, we have several Fenian lays as they're called surviving in Scottish tradition with their melodies, with their texts, telling stories as old as the manuscript versions, uh, but surviving uniquely in Scotland. So this is the same culture and the division between Ireland and Scotland is completely artificial. There is a geographical separation, but not a cultural one, at least of all at the time of the events, insofar as we can place them in time, at least of all at the time of the events of Cuhollanand <laughs> Obviously, she's got special abilities in that department. In so far as what evidence we have is that she was a warrior queen and she taught warriors. Connor de Chinianek Uar has gar a trainer for dog on the skill and caha. Have you seen a gashki his train on the Bialadish Nagalic in order to not your Huakosha or some good skill in his clue? Clearly, she was a formidable character, and both uh, she and uh, her daughter, and uh, indeed her rival, these women <coughs> were very ready to share their bodies with anybody who they really fancied. Women are very strong in Gallic tradition. And she was uh, renowned as being able to teach people how to fight. Uh, this sometimes surprises folk these days, but actually women fight really dirty. And <laughs> she taught men how to fight really dirty. <laughs> Famer fan Tarsen run a V Hella and Sclown a Hrui Has. We have to turn a Jahanenchen, Hatrocha Lemony, the Rio, Drocha Gruya, as Massa's Kalim Yahadin Yangi, Eddie and Kalnella, as Kudi Eddie Green Poe. Hafid a chain a fatta sparsen, do train again since Gon Huri Excaha. A Shaklevic you give Tarsen. This is a wild, dramatic landscape. There are very few places in Ireland that have the, the drama of this place. And also the physical demands that this place makes upon you. 
just as a physical human being. If you want to run around in this country, it's nearly all up and down and across gullies and rivers and bogs. It's, it's complex, dangerous, demanding country. Shan Kuriyid nach Kuchulin and Dolla nach Senamala Hexgahach. Hai Kuchulin nach Hutkutun Skahich, mar Hutteri, Liaban, a hook and gown kinny for a gal monarch, mar Hulanga. A son kete, nien oragal, ima a fossil. By mar Glistanus to Kuchulin, Yarabe, Gavilladior. He shul ganer, Tarsen Yu and Goalapa. Call it Ivrahe Altram, per dear. There has to be a bridge to it and in the old days now underneath the bridge there's a lot of um, stones you know driven up by the sea but the sea probably went between that stack and the main body of the island so the bridge was necessary now there are no bridges in old gallic mythology they didn't build bridges they built forts and the mention of the bridge that rises up against Cúhalan when he attempts to reach Scarhawk's fortress is particularly interesting because it's unusual. And it rises up against him three times and he's frustrated. He can't, you know, no sooner does he try and step on it and it just rears up against him. And then he figures it. And he does his hero salmon leap onto the middle of the bridge and across to the other side before it is time to rise up. Now I've often thought about this, what the heck is going on here? And I rather think that this was a drawbridge, but it wasn't uh, necessarily fixed at one end. It could have been pivoted in the middle and you you held it in place at the end. But if you took away the holding the bit that's holding it in place and you stepped on it, it would indeed tip no matter which end you went onto it on. But if you figured how that worked and you leapt onto the middle to the pivot point, you could get across. So it's my notion that uh, Kuhalan used his spear now, obviously he's meant to have, you know, jumped up onto the tip of his spear and <laughs> well obviously that's not really happening but he could have used it as a vaulting pole um, and have vaulted to the middle uh, carrying the pole with him and have done another vault to the other side and got across that way with his spear and then was able to put it between uh, Scott's breast when it was, as his, her daughter in fact told him to do and force her to teach him. Haskahach can do just jach, as can drain it, and the green of an aramach as gashkach skiller. And show how the gyons are in the doyen sap at Giavareke. Clays and the wood, clays and harnany, clays and drain jidach, clays brat and camkini a hoen. Lame kappa, sapach von lushke, as the clack of iron, slug, stefak, as rota. Skog is is crucial to his development and crucial to the, as I say, the central theme of the story, which is that of him and Fardia. Ha imuskia lachgan munyasht kuchulin, a chan kluus anichja eke ersan elio. Shiska a chain rein in his aramachas marachis as gran ye heike, and cap all. Ha kutje graak wel eentje aan de tluit en het naar schiet het gaat met de bolen zijn ja. Kan ik u jelle? Ik wil schach kiezen, de schach gaan dan schach ver. Nu de hand rijden de schacher, hij tors een tluit te goed voelen, maar hoe is er zo'n goede schiano in de gastrijf? Hij is de vuur Eva. Scott had this rival in Eva, and Kuhalan fights on behalf of of Scar insists on fighting on her behalf. Um, and that battle, I remember Sawley MacLean, the great Gaelic poet, claiming that it took place beside Dunscar on the flat ground there and that somewhere there was a mention of them. There's a huge big rock outcrop right down there on the shore, just kind of on its own. And I remember Sawley saying 
you know, that ties in, the whole topography ties in with the story. Ligeachan da hialan, aus imas farosna, gashnich skahach kuchula nivyanu kunasht moor, edga eirin yariyan. Hashachin kabul blianich in ashtoishan, nari yemas es sapet di bangri medal, an anun yin askialach in galik is enamada. An shin chanich yahen aus verdiad, an a ka fulchach. Para de vrin at le mes, i de daime va etre, fo achach is skahich. Well, Kuhalan actually forces her to teach him the last dirtiest trick of all, uh, which he actually uses and it ends up killing his own son. And it also he uses the same trick to kill his very best friend, his comrade in arms, who was a student with him, with Skahok. So it's a pretty bitter story. It's a bitter education that leads to bitter ends. Erichan Howl, on the Sapach at the Regius, Hakuhulin and Marad of Rai Raltum, the Shijiolok of Hua Devil Skahach, and Gabolok. On the Visahu Trochuli Verdier, Heru Trogashli of Yol and Avoik, Gusavel Gach Altus Kushla Lan Gahan, as the Yamer Yargamach or some ain as a harp. Oh yes, and her story has been told on a few occasions, not least on this island. Alastair Nicholson and Angus MacNichol made a, a, an opera about Scott, which was produced here and travelled in parts of Scotland anyway. Um, so she's not ignored here, not at all. Uh, but out there in the wide world, um, getting the, quotes educated classes to see past uh, you know, Homer and the Greeks is is quite tough. And one of the reasons is that the traditional classical education included Greek and Latin, uh, but it does not include Old Gallic. And so many of the scholars, unless they are uh, knowledgeable in Gallic and Old Gallic, have no access to the raw materials. And rather than learn the language, and engage with the material, they just bypass it. Um, getting scholars, uh, Anglophone scholars, to pay attention to what is the oldest vernacular literature in Western Europe, in Old Gallic, <laughs> it's, it's a tough call. They don't want to do it. It's worth pointing out that in the world of cinema, Quite a lot has been done in that area. Gallic has now been quite commonly included in, uh, for instance, in the film Eagle, there was quite a lot of Gallic, and Irish, both Irish and Scottish Gallic, that was given with subtitles. In Outlander, the television series, they've got Gallic with, quite often without subtitles. Uh, so there's a, a new assertiveness. And then in, in the film Brave, uh, there's a wonderful character, the prince who speaks in broad Doric Aberdeenshire, whom nobody can understand, uh, and only people who have broad Doric, I mean even among Scots, only people who have broad Doric can understand what this man is, is saying, and there's no, no subtitles. Um, so those, some of those barriers are being broken down. Storytelling if you don't believe the story you're telling, you can't tell it. So you have to believe it. <laughs>